Hello, I am Stephanie Joy, the attorney at All Things Social Security and Joy Disability Law. Your video is about to start. I just wanted to remind you that if you click the join button below, you can learn more about the memberships offered at a very affordable price that can give you a little more direct attorney answers to your questions. Have a great day and enjoy the video. Hey, let's do a little bit more on the work history report. Okay, um, if you caught the last one, it was about the job description at the top of the page for each job. Um, and we went into an example of what you should have added that you didn't, or this person didn't, but we did amend it. And I, you know, I send in a letter to the judge saying, she didn't know that all these details were relevant, but here's, here it turns out to be the scoop of that job. Okay. So, oh yeah. Okay. So if you go down the, the middle page of your work history report form, you will see in this job, how many total hours each day did you X, Y, Z? So this the person I'm looking at, if you notice, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 11 or so questions in this little section. They want to know how many total hours each day did you walk, stand, sit, climb, stoop. Stoop they describe as bending down and forward at the waist. I don't know of any job where someone doesn't ever have to stoop. That's a hint right there. It might not be often, but a lot of times when we're standing, we're actually bending over a desk to show someone something or to look at that computer, you know. Kneel, they describe it as bend legs to rest on knees. Crouch, bend legs and back down and forward. Jeez, I just thought we crouched. Um, I always think of a squat as a crouch. Um, crawl, we're just moving on your hands and knees. And there's handle, grab, or grasp big objects. They do not define what a big object is. I suppose I would say it's anything but a small one. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to figure that out, you know, and decide. But um, it is important, particularly if if there's hands implicated in an impairment, arthritis, neuropathies, things like that. Reaching, and then writing, write, type, or handle small objects. Again, very very important particularly if there's hand impairments, they can go a long way towards preventing a finding that you can do other work or your past job. Okay, so like in this case, the person put uh, like an hour and 15 minutes walking, an hour standing, sitting with like six hours and left all the rest blank. This is the same one that didn't have a very detailed job description. And if you looked at that last video, I'll try to put a button up. Uh, we really we really changed up on that description by making sure that the amount of use of hands, data entry, six hours a day data entry, you know, was in there because that's, right? There was envelope stuffing and, and things of that nature as well. But anyway, you do not want to leave any of those blank in the middle of that page under the question, in this job, how many total hours each day did you blah, blah, blah. Don't leave any blank, guys. Use it to your advantage to get in. Um, now, one thing I do, I don't know if fact finders, and when I say fact finder, that could be the adjudicator or an ALJ. I don't know if they appreciate this being done, but for a lot of cases, I'd say the vast majority, it's almost necessary. Walking and standing, it's very hard to carve out, well, which part you, you know, when we're walking, we usually stop and stand for a second at times, right? Um, standing, you're shuffling. I mean, is that standing or is that almost walking, right? So by and large, when I'm counseling my people and they're going to have a hard time figuring that out, um, they provide a, a combined so perhaps combined walking and standing was three hours. Um, as opposed to, because if you put three and three, see technically a sit, stand, walk, sit, stand, you would think would the combination would be the eight hour day that you're there. However, then there's climbing and then there's kneeling and, you know, so 
it's not necessarily so. And every day is going to be different, presumably, right? When you did this job. So I do tend to do the walk stand as a combined. Um, and the remainder is often the sit, or it might be slightly less because you're going to be throwing in a little bit of time on climbing, stooping, kneeling, crouching, um, and all that. The last three about using your hands, handling big objects, reaching and writing, typing or handling small objects, those are often done both standing and sitting. So those don't have to really take up any kind of, they don't have to reduce any of those other time frames. Um, I would I would advise uh, or suggest that when you are, if you're on a phone like this, or if you're constantly this, that last question, right type or handle small objects is going to be maybe more than six hours, right? Uh, depending on your job, but you have to consider that all that time you do the typing, you're gonna want that to be in there as such. Um, it, it's surprising to me how, how people minimize it incorrectly. I think because they're thinking everything has to add up to eight and that's not necessarily the case. Uh, reaching, when we are typing, guess what we're doing? Reaching, uh, reaching out in front of us. It also would include reaching overhead. A lot of jobs don't require reaching overhead. So um, they nail people a lot because people are thinking they're talking about reaching overhead and they're like, I don't reach. I'm like, did you pick up that phone? How about did you grab that pen? Oh, you didn't type that? What did you dictate it with your voice only? Uh, which is possible, but I haven't found it in the workplace yet. Um, I would expect reaching in an office job and many other jobs to be heavy, a heavy amount of time. Um, but you gotta think of the job you're in. Like in this case, this was the insurance biller job. Heavy data entry we talked about, heavy phone use. I mean, reaching is almost the whole day, right? I mean, when you're at the copy machine those 40 times printing, you're reaching for that paper. It really, really becomes significant. Um, and therefore, if you have a bad shoulder, or bad two shoulders, reaching is going to be a little hard for many people with a with a you know damaged shoulder. Um, if it's bilateral in particular, because you can't rely on the other one. Um, same thing with the fingers we were talking about, neuropathies and arthritis and and um, problems with the fingers. Okay, the kneeling, crouching, and crawling. Obviously. If someone has, it's really important to note, like in this case, 15 minutes. Um, and that was on the high side of what it would be, but that's because you're trying to figure out a recognizable number um, because she would have to go under her desk when there was like something was, you know, the wiring was wrong with the computer and it was off or, or whatever, things like that. Um, crouching and kneeling, she put all together. She said there was no crawling and no climbing. So there was 15 minutes, 15 minutes in the kneel and the crouch. Now, an office worker, you're not thinking about kneeling and crouching, right? But most of them end up having to do it at some point, unless they are like the president or the VP and they don't do any of that. They just call tech support. But your average administrative assistant or insurance person, medical person in an office, yeah, probably in a law firm too, you're going to sometimes get on your knees. Maybe it's to, um, I think, I think she also said when you had to put paper in the, in the printer, uh, sometimes you had to get down, get down, get, get down really low. And I think that's what the crouching was to get the paper, the ream of paper into the bottom of the, where this little drawer comes out. Don't forget about that stuff. That's how you did that job. If you had to ever do that, it doesn't have to be that you had to do it every day. It doesn't even have to be that you did it every week. Did you have to do it? Is it expected that you would do it uh, when the, the the time it was needed arose and maybe your buddy did it the last time? So just think about what you did. Um, because all of those items there are affected by various physical impairments, even if it's not the impairment that took you out of your job. But remember, the point of this form, for, from your perspective, is to prove you can't do your prior job. So if you've had double knee surgery and you used to have to kneel 15 minutes approximately, you know, a day, 
I'm sure some days it was a half hour, some days it was none, but we we're just trying to come to like a, a number you could see that could be like an overall, this would be the maximum by and large that you would have to do it. Um, th this answer when it's blank, that means her bilateral knees, uh, they wouldn't be needed for that job because she put zero. No, actually she left a blank, but um, I'd say don't leave anything blank, put NA if you must. But in this case, think long and hard before, before you put an NA because putting now that there was a kneeling requirement for that job and given the fact that I know her medical records talk about bad knees, that answer combined with those medical records now eliminated this job from her past relevant work. And that's the name of the game, right? Um, so don't leave things out. Don't leave things out. You think, oh, I hardly did. I hardly do that. Well, it doesn't matter. You did have to do it. So it's important. Okay. That's all I want to talk about on that one. The rest of it was pretty much square on. There was no heavy lifting. It was every, le less than 10 pounds because she didn't have to, she lifted a ream of paper, but not a box of paper. And I always ask about that because most of the time, not in this instance, most of the time, someone who has to get a ream of paper sometimes has to go into the stock room and grab the whole box. And a box can be 40 pounds of paper with all those reams in it. Um, and that seems to be the majority of the time that someone has got the little micro duty of putting paper in when they need it in the, in the printer. Uh, they also, if there is no more ream there, they got to go and they tend to go and get a whole box. So anyway, it depends. Every job's different, but this is this is uh, the way many of them go, but didn't in this case. So there was no, we couldn't, we couldn't get her higher than less than 10 pounds um, when inquiring of her. Same thing for frequent, frequent lifting. And these things are really important. If you ever do hit higher, because, you know, maybe once a month you had to do the, the box of rim of paper, you're going to want to put that down because that can take you out of being able to do a light job or it takes this job the way you performed it out of the light job realm or the sedentary realm and that is something that definitely has to be done for many people particularly those over the age of 50 okay guys i will talk to you later that is the rundown for now on work history reports as of 2024 talk to you later bye